Don't just live for tomorrow Or just live for yesterday Just be glad for all you have that's in today And though you've come through many obstacles Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to my blind reaction to Season 2, Episode 2 of Amphibia. And I'm having a little bit of a shocking moment right now because I, I realized, coming into this, I'm excited about this. I'm excited to see more Amphibia. This is a series I dropped, and, and I've criticized, even. And have openly said, and I, I still stand by this, that it's not as good as Owl House and other stuff that's come out in, in the more recent years and everything. Um, but yet, with how season one ended up going, how it ended up getting so much, like, drastically better, and e even though season two's opening wasn't, like, phenomenal or anything... It's just, I, I, for some reason, have, like, just kind of gotten excited about this series. I don't know why. I don't know what is doing it about it. But I'm, I'm for it. I'm all for that. <laughs> I mean, hey, nothing wrong with being excited about something, you know? So, I, I, I'm, I'm just really interested in seeing where this goes. I, I just, I'm really genuinely interested. And again, this series isn't like my favorite or anything. I, I still do believe that not every episode is great and it does have some issues with some of its characters. It's not perfect by any means. It's not an owl house. It's not a ghost in Molly McGee. But it's, it's surprising me. And honestly, that's a really good thing. It, it's really genuinely surprising me in the best way, and I hope it continues to do that. Like last episode, the first episode of the season, we got some hints at some big lore. Like we got some hints that there is some big, maybe revisionist history going on here. Like there's some high tech shit going on that is being hidden away. And this is a world that we've not seen high tech shit from. It is a world that's it's very, it, it's very old days, low tech, no tech, pretty much. Um, just that kind of like farming world, almost. And so seeing that there's like super high tech stuff from the past, it, it just gets all the cogs turning in my head. It makes me like trying to figure everything out. Um... As I've said in the past, there are a couple things I do know about going into the future of this series. Um, there's just some things that I've just been unable to avoid, basically. Um, so there are some things I, I know about, but there's also a lot that is genuinely just surprising me that I did not know. And this was one of them, for sure. <laughs> I, 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 that, re that one really caught me off guard. Um, there's also, like, you, you saw the thumbnail I used for episode one. Um, there's some really fun expressions already in season two, and it's like, okay, you, they might be, they might have taken season one to find their groove and everything, and now that they've found it, season two, I feel, might be actually notably better. It might actually just have, like, okay, we're, we found our groove, now we're going to roll with it. We're going to really ride that train and it's like this this might actually be a really good sign um we've got mention of marcy in the first episode as well so i'm wondering uh how how long it's gonna take till we actually get to see her will that be like mid-season or will that be end of season or will we just find her at some random point uh, I'm genuinely curious to see. Um, and when will we see Sasha again as well? That's another question. Um, because we can't just forget about Sasha. She's the best character so far. <laughs> um, and I, I want to make something clear. I, I don't know if I've really made this as clear as I should have before. But 
like when I like hate on Anne or whatnot and say like she's not that interesting of a main character, I'm not saying she's bad. I if if I was if I thought Anne was a bad main character or a bad character in general, I would say so. Um, Anne is not a bad character. She's extremely likable and fun, but she's just kind of bland for me. She's just not that interesting compared to main characters of other shows and even other characters from this series. Um, you compare her to like Luz Noceda or Molly McGee or Finn the Human or whoever else. And it's like they, they're just so much more interesting of characters. And you compare her to other characters from this show and it's just like she just, she's kind of just there <laughs> most of the time. She just doesn't have as much presence as the others. And that, that's not to say she's bad, though. She is not a bad character. She's a good character. Just not as good. There is, that, that is a specification I feel like I just had to make here. Um, there's actually very few characters I actually like would actively say I dislike in this. Um, it, it's just, again, just not really hitting it for me in terms of what other shows have done. Just personally. Um, but I'm still excited to see where this all goes. Uh, Sasha is still my favorite character. I mean, that's still probably going to remain. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't know how Marcy is, so Marcy might end up becoming my favorite character for all I know. Um, it's very possible. Um, I don't know what her personality is like. I, I don't. <laughs> That's one thing I have not been spoiled on. <laughs> um, but I'm definitely excited to find out more about, uh, just everything going on. Uh, we even had, like, a little, uh, mention of the box in the first episode. Um, the, the, the box that sent them here in the first place, clearly. So I'm wondering... When are we going to find out more about that? Because Hot Pop has that buried and is hiding that fact, so. Hot Pop clearly knows what it is. I'm just, I want to know what it is, you know? Either way, though, I, I think that, I think I'm just ready to get to this episode. Like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm surprisingly excited. So we're going to get to it. Let's do it. When the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black and then it fades back in, everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode. So, that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. What is this fucking robot frog this <laughs> Um, that wasn't something from the first episode that I'm forgetting about. Like, there was technology and stuff, but I don't remember a fucking robot frog following them. Ah, oh, what is happening? And, it, and, and the top lifted off as if it was trying to look. And it adjusted itself. Like, there's someone inside there then, right? Anyway. Uh, I'm gonna actually start with the second segment of this episode. Um, because it was, it, it was definitely the lesser of the two, I feel. Um, but that's not to say it was bad. Um, it was still enjoyable. The, the, the design of the Scorpio or whatever it was called is fucking horrifying. Like, oh my fucking god. Like, this is, like, nightmare shit. Seriously. What are they on to be able to create shit like this? How, how fucked up in the head do you have to be to design something that horrifying? Like, did Junji Ito des <laughs> design this? Oh my god. The episode was kind of just okay throughout most of it. It was really when the Scorpio came in and, and, and that started happening that it became a lot better and a lot more interesting. The dance is like, man, eh, it's just a funny little dance. I, I get that it helps and everything. But the concept of the episode just wasn't as exciting as other ones have been. Um, but the first segment of this was another story. So on their journey, they come across this town of Biddles, I think they were called, or something like that. These tiny little, I guess they're still frogs, um, that are 
very very nice and kind uh very old western type town but they're also being bullied and having money taken from them by this gang hop pop manages to drive away one of the members but they come back with everyone including their matriarch and hop pop ends up not being able to take them out and ends up getting taken out himself on on their as they continue on though thanks to Anne, he realizes that he should have been doing this for them to for for good reasons rather than for his own selfish desires to get a song about him so he goes back he comes up with this plan to help and eventually it kind of works out the biddles just kind of go feral and start protecting him and it's kind of scary um the episode had a lot of good humor it was really fun a great message about that it's always right to stand up to bullies which it, it is and i just thought, think it was a very just enjoyable episode like i, I liked a lot of the jokes i, I loved just the concept I, I think it was very fun like honestly it's my favorite of this season so far my favorite segment of the season so that being said um uh, yeah that's pretty much all i've got to say um there wasn't like a much much other big stuff going on other than the introduction of this robot frog that i guess we'll find out what that's about um but it didn't like touch too much on other stuff here uh it mentioned very briefly the stuff with toad tower and all but it was only a very brief mention of what had happened before um yeah th this was fun overall though like overall both of these segments this entire episode was really enjoyable and like i said I i'm i'm surprised but i'm finding myself excited to get to more of this series i'm just really enjoying this and that's weird to me because i did drop this originally <laughs> But hey, I mean, whatever works, right? Um, either way, either way, uh, yeah. We'll, we'll just continue on, take it from there. So when the screen, or pff, wow, I don't, <laughs> oh, I mixed up. <laughs> Thank you all so much for tuning in. For now, I'm Connie and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.